evening and welcome to Stepping Stones to AAC, Getting Buggy. My name is Heather Prenovo. I am one of our, your presenters tonight and I'm joined by Beth Waite Lefevre and I am also a TIPS specialist, training and implementation specialist with PRC Saltillo. And Sharice Diane had um, put in our content with um, Beth and I, but couldn't be with us tonight. So we want to just make sure we give her a shout out that she helped design and give us some ideas around how we can model language with bugs. And we always want to let you know that we know that as you learn AAC, it is not just an overnight process. It is a path or a journey that you walk. And one of the things that we wanted to provide you is those first steps to take as you begin on that journey. And that's where Stepping Stones came from. So we're going to get started and show you some ways that you can use AAC at home or in your daily activities at school, in the clinic. What are we gonna to do today? We're gonna to identify core words and strategies to model with bugs. This can be live bugs, this can be fake bugs. Uh, if you're like me, the whole idea of bugs was not my favorite, but uh, we know that it provides a lot of fun and joy to others. We're gonna go through the handouts with you tonight. One of them is on the sheet screen here, our organizational tool. We'll talk a little bit more about that and fill it out together. You can write down things as we're going and we'll show you how to fill it out. The other item is a reference tool. This one, if you decide to take these handouts with you and are thinking that it's a great tool, you can share with others, or you can remind yourself what we were talking about and it walks through each of the sections to let you know what goes into that section uh, you can refer back to. So why did we decide to work on bugs tonight? One of the things, and Beth, you can probably, you know, provide some examples of when you worked with students in schools. So activities with bugs, they can elicit all sorts of feelings, and that provides all these different reasons to communicate, right? It does. And actually, with spring uh, coming around the corner, or actually almost here, bugs will be out in force. So we're going to be seeing bugs um, outside our homes and when we're out playing on the playground. And so it's um, kind of a fun thing to talk about. Right, they're everywhere and like them or don't like them, we can protest against them. We can get all excited and have those social fun things. So yeah, it's uh, their world and we're just living in it. Oh, exactly. The other cool thing is you can talk about bugs with toys. As I mentioned, we can have the fake bugs, which we're gonna practice tonight. You can have just pictures of bugs, which we're also gonna show. Uh, they're real life, as Beth just mentioned, outdoors, indoors. Uh, you know, I had a spider on my wall earlier today. Uh, we can find books about bugs. You can find bug catchers or bug houses. The list goes on. There's just so many opportunities for you to be able to have fun with this kind of a topic. Many kids love bugs. So let's use it to our advantage to um, and get them engaged with communication and language, right? One of the other handouts that you're going to see, or one of two other handouts that you're going to see in your um, link is these manual boards. So this one goes with Lamp Words for Life, and you can follow along on that, use it to model. I know I've had plenty of um, individuals who just did not want me modeling on their device. So having a manual board like this is nice to be able to model, especially those home screen type words. The other one we're going to look at tonight is the Word Power 60 Basic uh, layout manual board. So either one, depending upon what uh, language system your user is using. I'm going to bring up Canva. And if you want in the chat window, have you heard of Canva? Have you used Canva? Beth, I know. Is Canva a is fan. A, yeah, <laughs> Canva is amazing. And I think they have really gone after the education market because I see so many things that are, um, you know, geared toward teachers, things that teachers can use. And so I feel like there's a, a lot of um, educators who are using Canva now, too. Exactly. And the, there's a free option. There's a paid option. The free option is just as great. 
as um, the paid, obviously you're gonna have a few more features, but the cool thing with Canva is think of it like PowerPoint on steroids and we can type in like, hey, I wanna find bugs in a forest. Then that comes up with also those like magic recommendations. So I had found a picture I really thought was cool. And then it gave me suggestions of other ones that are similar to it that I could maybe add in. I've always found picture description a great way to elicit language. So I'm going to practice how I might talk with um, a student or a client to talk about this picture with bugs. And I want you guys to be thinking about what are the words you hear me using quite often in this interaction. You can chat, chat it out in the chat window. I might say, oh, look, the snail has a backpack on. Oh, the ladybug is sitting on the stump. I think the dragonfly should come down from way up there. The ant is on the leaf reading a book. What should we take out of that backpack? Maybe we switch to another picture. I see the ladybug on the branch. The dragonfly is under the beetle. Another activity for an idea that I want you to be listening for is if I was playing with my jar of plastic bugs. Again, jot down or chat out some of the words. I'm gonna open the jar. What's inside? What do you think's in there? I'm gonna take out the green spider and put it on the lid. You can take out the yellow spider. I'm gonna put him on the green spider. Oh, how silly is that? Here comes the red spider, it's coming out. We could put him under the lid. Time to put them back in to the jar. Bye ant, go in the jar. All right. So there's two ways that we could use bugs. We're gonna take out our organizational tool and we are going to start filling it out together. So if you thought of some words that you heard me say, and I see some in the chat window, I'm going to pull up my sheet. And Beth, if you wanna shout out some of the words that you heard or see in the chat window. Um, yeah, we have on, down, on, down, and yep, up. down and up, yep, down and up, um, inside and open, right, I could do inside, I did open, we have take out as a two word phrase, and take, I think I used put, I guess we have out over there, yeah, um, on, yeah, I've got on, under. Oh, yes. Perfect. Now, there's plenty of other ones I probably used, but you get the idea of these were some of the ones that I used both for the picture and with the jar. So that's the first step with this organization tool is finding those core words, those words that we can use in multiple ways and jot them down. Start simple if this is your first time using it. Maybe you only grab two or three words um, to target during your sections. That's okay. As you get more comfortable, you can start adding all these or you start realizing, oh, I was using a lot more core words than I thought. Next section on that planning sheet or that organizational tool, we wanna focus on open-ended questions. Open-ended questions encourage communication. They are not just those yes, no responses that we often start asking. I am horrible about getting back into that groove. Uh, just the other day, Beth, I noticed I started doing a lot more yes, no type questions. You just have to pause and get back into um, the thick of it. And that's why planning it out like this ahead of time can be really helpful. 
just so you don't get into that habit. It's so easy to slide back. It is easy to do that. And the nice thing about the open-ended questions is it gives you a chance to model more language too. So it's not, you know, it's good for your, your communicator to have options to be able to say things, but it's good for you to have options to be able to model those things too. Exactly. The other thing I love about open-ended questions is that there doesn't have to be a right and wrong answer. And we don't have to predict what that answer might be. So I have two examples up here on the screen of possible questions. Which one, and you can chat it out in the chat window, which one would you say is the open-ended question? Do you like bugs or where is the bug? One response from Anthony, where? You're guessing where is the open-ended question, right? I would agree with you. Because if I just say, do you like bugs? And they say, yes. Mm -hmm. What else are we gonna talk about? Um, you know, we can keep going with questions, but then it starts to feel like 20 questions. Or if I say, where is the bug? Maybe they say on, maybe they say in, or maybe they come up with something completely different. The same thing is if, uh, often if we're starting to do with the, you know, do you like, do you want? We only get that yes, no. But if you say, what kind of bug do you want? Now we have got opened it up. They could maybe find the colors. Maybe they could go and find the bugs page and give you a specific bug. That's always my favorite. This one and dinosaurs, when they go and find those specific names and you're just like, okay. <laughs> Yeah, uh, that opens but, up lots of descriptive words they could use, the size words, the shape words. Exactly. And as you mentioned, Beth, we can add then to it. So if they just said on, we can then model and expand for them and keep the conversation going by saying, oh, you want it on the rock? Do you want it on the lid? And go and model more language by adding those descriptors, which I think is always great too. So we're going to bring back up our planning tool. And if I was going to put, say, in, out, and I'm going to put on and off in the same section, what is an open-ended question that you could ask that either has those word, one of those words in it or the answer would have one of those words in it? Chat it out in the chat window. I, oops, helps if I type in the right spot. I always like to do one of these two. Where should I? Put bug. Mm -hmm. That's always a fun one using the should. Other open ended questions you guys can think of? We could keep it simple, I guess. Where is the bug? Sometimes I have done like a, the follow-up after the activity or where did it go? That provides a lot of, those words provide lots of different options for you. Um, how about put? Any open-ended questions for put? Where did we put the bug? Mm -hmm. I was going to say, we can still um, reuse too. Where should I? Repetition is okay. Yeah, so you can do future and then past. You know, where where should I and then where did we? Yep. And that variety or that repetition really can help them start to pick up on um, that constantly seeing us use those words. And last one I'm going to put up here. Maybe, you know. Yeah, we can use a what question. What did I do with the bug? And again, you can make it long, make it short. We can continue to repeat with some of these. So you get the idea that we wanna jot these down ahead of time. It's really nice to start writing yourself these kinds of scripts so that you aren't 
stressing about it as you're trying to model it on the device or find it on a manual board. So jotting a few down so that you're ready before you try to model during your activity is a good idea. My favorite part is possible comments. So if, for instance, your child or your student or your client is not responding to those open-ended questions, which is okay, we gotta start somewhere, we can model comments. And this could either be a comment just in general about the activity or what you see, or it can be a modeling a appropriate response to the question um, in the form of a comment. And so you've got a few different ways you can use it. Having a couple of comments written down already so that you know what you want to say if they didn't respond. Or again, if you just want to be modeling some comments instead of asking questions, that's okay too, and you'll have those ready. Key uh, piece of advice that we like to give though is keep those comments um, at or just above the language level of your AAC learner. And what we mean by that is if they are speaking or using one or two words, one or two buttons on their system, go no more than two to three words beyond that as you're trying to model. So if we think about when we're modeling language for um, speaking children, toddlers, preschoolers, we're not necessarily using these long elaborate sentences yet with them and that's okay. We don't expect them to come back at us with the long elaborate sentences either. So we wanna just kind of show them what comes next and show them those a little bit longer messages and stick with something, you know, just two to three words above. It also helps, again, take away some of that stress of trying to find all the words on the system. If we go back to our planning tool, let's think of a couple of comments or responses that might include our in, out, on, or off. One of the ones I had was the ladybug was on the rock. If I needed to shorten that, I could just say bug on the rock, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, or even bug on. Perfect, yes. Mm -hmm. I always had to remind myself and give myself permission that that's okay to put but those short ones, it doesn't have to be a whole sentence yet. We can say, put bug on for our put. We could maybe just say put in. And the same thing for take, right? Then take spider out. And the longer sentence with that picture, trying to remember which bug was wearing, I think it was the snail. Take the backpack. I can't type tonight, guys. So sorry. <laughs> take the backpack off. There we go. Mm -hmm. You get the idea. The last section on here it, we want to point out is how are we going to model? And this is where we want you to be thinking about if I'm modeling just one word and that's okay too on your device, on the manual board, maybe you're just pointing out the, uh, the words in and out or put and take, and that's okay. And then giving yourself a couple ideas of if I were going to move to two or three words, or if you were your um, AAC learner is already doing two or three words, you know, what does the three or four words look like? And give yourself a couple of examples there to refer back to. So yeah. Heather, the, the script above is what you're gonna verbally say. Mm -hmm. And number three is what you're gonna model on the device. You can look at it that way. I've done it both ways where this was also just giving myself, if I hadn't given examples at those different levels up there, I've done it that way down here too. So it makes sense to you. Um, for me, sometimes that's helpful to just be thinking about what are those couple words I'm gonna model on the device. Mm -hmm. um, or I've also, if I'm handwriting, I'll circle the words in my mm -hmm. script 
that I'm going to do. I've even, when I started to get a little more comfortable with this, I'll sometimes not use a full planning sheet like this and just use a post-it. And I would circle the words that I'm going to touch on the device. Okay. Yeah. Any other ideas that you have with those? No, I was just thinking some, cause sometimes people get confused and they think they have to model on the device, every word they say in a sentence. Right. So that's why I was thinking if, if one way to look at it would be mm -hmm. maybe to separate your script, like this is what I'm going to say, where should yeah. I put the bug? But down here, I'm just going to, I'm going to model put bug. So yeah. That's what yep. Great way of explain, um, looking at it and explaining it. Uh, but whatever makes most sense for you, especially in the moment. I love it. So yeah, good point. Which gets us to finding those words on your system. And I have not gone through to make sure like things pop up in order. Hey, this one actually did. <laughs> I ran, sometimes I have random ones that are popping on um, across the screen and you're just like, whoa, way to go. Um, but finding them on the boards, finding them on your device is another one of those things to prep yourself so that you're focusing in. Uh, Beth and I hear a lot as trainers that this kind of a layout is so overwhelming and I either want to hide everything or just start with these words, which you can do, you know, with Lamp Words for Life, you could do Vocab Builder and turn on just the words that you're starting with. We want to keep them in these locations so that you get used to reaching, build that motor memory of where those words are. Using a laminated board, I like to use a dry erase marker and highlight where those words are. Um, that can help draw my attention to where I'm going to be pointing or touching. Uh, you could do the same thing on a device. You could add a button border. Um, any other tips you've had, Beth, for helping? Um, yeah, sometimes we've used those wiki sticks that OTs will use. They're those little kind of waxy feeling bendable yeah. um, sticks and you can bend them. Um, they come in different colors and outline your symbols. And so for someone that needs a little bit of a tactile feel, yeah. that kind of makes, makes it like a 3D feel around the mm -hmm. um, thing. And then there's also uh, um, post-it notes that are like in little rectangle or, you know, little, little tiny, like almost like sign here, but they're little oh, yeah. tiny rectangles. And so you can kind of build those around your square. And then the last thing I would say is I've also had people actually make a template mask. So they'll take like a, another piece of paper over the top, like a, a piece of cardstock and they'll cut out to just show the holes. Oh, awesome. On, um, manual board that they want to use for that activity. So if you were doing this, you might cut out the holes. So all you saw, saw were in, out, on, and off. So when you're teaching those, there's not a lot of distractions of the other, other words. Now, obviously you're not going to want to leave that on forever because you want to have access to all the words, but it can be a nice way when you're introducing where these are just to cut the, um, the vision or, you know, make the visual a little bit clearer. Totally. Um, and that was where I was going to say, that's where we can start adding in maybe the put and the take um, as you get more comfortable, but starting simple, finding these words and like Beth said, then taking things off so you can find some of those other words, you know, want in, you know, want to put it in. We're going to do the same activity, but this time I'm going to also have, I'm going to make this just slightly smaller. So you guys can still see it because I'm going to bring over my device so that we can see and practice together modeling. Now I had just told Beth how I have two mice going and sometimes try to point with the wrong mouse. So if I was going to use that script that we just put together, I might say, what? I'm going to put ladybug in, in the tree. Now I can point at the same time. There we go. Um, or I'm just going to say, oh, I see that he is on, on the branch. Right? If I wanted some of those other ones that we were starting to talk about on word power, I could come in and do, you know, he's under, under, under the beetle. I can talk about Maybe even saying, I, I, and I always 
lose it. There it is. See. I see it in, in the tree. Just to give you some ideas of how to model with that one. As well as if I get my bugs in a jar back. If you think of any sentences you want to see modeled or words, I'm going to switch gears over to my Lamp Words for Life app. I might say, oh, there we go. Angling it on camera is not as easy as it looks. I want to take it out. Mm -hmm. Out. So I want to take the bug out. And I put it, and I always lose on. There it is. The green thing. On. <laughs> I always get right next to it, and I go, ah. I put it yeah. on the lid. Uh -huh. Say again, I'm going to take it out. I'll take it out. Okay. Or maybe I need to put him in. Here's in. Put it in. In. So. And like Heather said earlier, this kind of activity really lends itself to repetition because uh, the more we practice those words, the more we model them, and the more our communicator gets a chance to say them in in lots of different activities. That's going to stick. And so these are obviously preposition words that you can use in lots of different ways, not just with bugs, but it's a way to, to introduce those words and then practice them across your day and other activities. Yeah, especially if they are totally into, um, I always had so much fun when they got to give me the directions, right? Tell me where to put <laughs> or what to yeah. do with it. Um, and so using those prepositions, those in, on, out, um, just really, you can use it for anything and they get a kick out of it. All right, let me move the iPad out of the way. With that, we like to wrap up the evening with having you think about what questions do you have about these modeling with core words during activities? Or how did it feel if you were following along on your manual board or following and watching how I was doing it? Um, how does that feel? Are you still feeling kind of anxious about it? Um, which is okay. What are some more things you might be thinking and kind of thinking what are you, what are your next steps? And if you want to chat them out in the chat, in the chat window, happy to share those together. I know personally those first few times, even with the practice, I still felt a little uneasy or felt like I was stumbling, or even you just saw me tonight going, how, ah, where's that word? And I know these systems, but then I use these systems all day, every day. Yeah, I think giving yourself the grace to know that you're going to make mistakes and that's okay. And I personally love the strategy of using a think aloud because it lets your communicator know. So if you're looking for a word, you could even say, oh, I want to say the word on. Let me find it. Oh, it's right here in the second row. Here's the word on. So they see the steps that you take when you go through that process too, because that can, can help them in turn kind of think about looking for words. Exactly. And my favorite is when we get to the phase of when you start to ask that, oh, I want to find the word on or oh, I want to find, you know, the word red. And they start to show you because they've started to pick up on and follow those leads that you're giving them. It's just always kind of a fun phase that they get into like, oh, just let me show you. <laughs> if you think of questions after the class tonight, Feel free to email Beth or I or Sheree um, about that. Thanks, everyone. Bye, Heather. Bye, Beth. Have a good night.